Will the Bitcoin dump continue? I'm the altcoin analyst. Nothing here is financial advice. Let's dive in. We're going to first start off with looking at the liquidation data. And in the past 24 hours, we had 500 million liquidations. We had 407 million of that being longs and 128 million of that being shorts. Now, if we go over to the liquidation, uh, if we go to the liquidation map, we can see that in my mind, it's favorable for the market to kind of grab this liquidity on the right side, which are our shorts. And so if it comes up here and wipes out that liquidation to maybe 66,000, maybe 67, then it would reset the market. As you can see, most of the longs, which are on the left, got wiped out today. If we go over to another Cryptoverse dashboard, the Bitcoin risk is at 6.7. So it has come down quite a bit. The high was 0.739. So it's come down a little bit since then. And this is just a risk metric that I think is very telling. And over here on the historical risk uh, metric chart, are we in this area right here where we were in summer 2019, where we kind of came up, but then just kind of went down the rest of the year? Or are, is this just a slight pullback and we're going into a continuation a lot higher? Well, the things I'm looking for in the chart right now are actually the $60,000 level. I think on the daily, we can see a pretty clear putting in a high and then a low and then a lower high. Now it's kind of got rejected off of this level up here. And so I think it makes sense for it to kind of make its way back down to the $60,000 level. Now, in my mind, if it breaks that level, it's going to be very hard, I think, to come back from that. But there is always a chance it could just kind of turn around and, and go back up. I think if we break the 60, I think in my mind, it's definitely going to confirm a continuation of a downtrend for an extended period of time. But if we don't break the 60, I think there's a case to be made to try and break through that $72,000 level. Now, we also had the stocks sell off pretty steep today. And if we look at it on the weekly, it's quite a red day today. So we did put in a high over here at 52.60, 52.64. And we sold off about a percent from that high. Now, Bitcoin and the stocks are very correlated on larger macro moves. So if this is the peak for stocks and we're going to have a continuation of a downtrend, I have a feeling that Bitcoin will also follow that pattern. Now, if we go back to the Bitcoin chart and look at it on a higher time frame, we can see that we had quite the sell off. In the previous two candles that were red and had a very low candle wick, the body got purchased up and ended up being a higher wick or the candle body got purchased up, moved higher, and we had a larger wick kind of like this. Could that potentially happen? I think it's on the cards. But again, if the stock market is going to continue to show weakness, I'm telling you right now, there's no way that Bitcoin is going to just kind of go up and put in new all time highs. Now, again, something to note, the new all time high was set in the first week of March, March 11th. And we can see in the stocks, we continue to put in a new high even last week. So that's something in my mind that just shows a little bit of weakness in the Bitcoin market. Now, something I tweeted out today, which caught my eye, which is Zach XBT. Influencer Bryce Hall made multiple posts promoting a sketchy Solana presale for a meme coin called Earth. Now, what do we know? The team disappeared less than 24 hours after the launch and social media accounts have zero activity since March 26th. Guys, influencers that are not in the crypto space are scam artists. Now, influencers in the crypto space, again, that gets a little dicey subject. You see this across the board. Like, I'm not going to sit here and name names, but we all know every celebrity had an NFT drop last cycle or was promoting this new coin or this meme, and it all went to zero. 
So stay away from celebrity mentions of certain coins. Now, I'm not saying Bryce Hall is a celebrity, but an influencer that has a following outside of the crypto space, they all go to zero. All of them. Not one has succeeded. Not one. So I saw this and I tweeted, yep, we deserve to go lower. So we are not at that point where retail is involved, but be aware about people that you look up to not in the crypto space coming and shifting into the crypto market, trying to promote something. It never ends well, never. So I always say follow Zach XPT. He's a good person to follow in the crypto space. He calls out this absolute garbage that we see. So, and this is kind of funny. <laughs> Your honor, we will onboard them correctly to Web3 this time. Yeah, guys, it's just something you learn in crypto. If you've been in for years and years and years, you just stay away from people that don't are that aren't involved in the space 24 seven because everything they touch goes to zero going back to the Bitcoin chart. In my mind, I was told that this couldn't possibly happen. We couldn't possibly have a red candle like that. There was too much demand. The ETF is buying too much or the, the Bitcoin spot ETFs are buying too much Bitcoin. BlackRock is involved and the halving is coming up. So the price is going to double. Guys, I if, if it sounds too good to be true, sometimes it is. And we know from previous uh, or from recent history that we don't necessarily have any certainties built into the Bitcoin chart, meaning that since we've broke the previous all time high, therefore we're going up into a mania phase that's not guaranteed that's not if that's your sole bullish thesis that's not guaranteed i'm not saying it can't happen i'm just saying it sounds a little too good to be true the macroeconomic environment is a little iffy where the fed is lowering their balance sheet they are not printing as much money. They're doing quantitative tightening. And in my mind, when we see weakness in Bitcoin compared to the stock market, it's there's other red flags as well. But I'm, I'm being cautious right now. And so if we look at ETH, ETH is down significantly higher or significantly more than Bitcoin at 20%. Bitcoin is down, I think we measured it, well, from its all-time high, around 10%. And this is, if we find an altcoin that, if we find any ERC-20 altcoin, there's a good chance that from their high, they're down more than 20% from their recent high. And there's a good chance they didn't put in a new all-time high. So that's something to take into account as well when looking at risk. Now, if we look at some indicators that I like to bring up. So the RSI divergence indicator, again, nothing interesting here, but if we go to the three day or the daily, the three day, we can see, I'm going to be watching out when we get down to the 50 here, because generally when we get down to the 50, it's a very good inflection point in terms of momentum. And actually this is Ethereum. So let's go back to Bitcoin and the three day, nothing really here. The weekly, nothing no real indicators let's go to the daily and on the daily it looks like we broke the 50 so that i think that's pretty notable if we continue to go down that's definitely going to in my mind show weakness in the chart and a continued price action i mean right now we're green and it's very possible that we could play out where we did over here where after this red candle we had a bullish engulfing candle and just took back all those losses. When that happens though, you'll see the Bitcoin dominance go up. You won't see strength in the altcoins if that happens. The other thing I'm looking at is the ETH BTC chart. Man, is it looking like it wants to just kind of fall off a cliff here. So that's something to watch in the coming days as well. 
So if we go back to the Bitcoin chart, the other thing I want to look at is the MACD, because when we were looking at the MACD, there was something that I thought was pretty interesting. So if we zoom out on the daily, now this is, we'll draw a horizontal line here. Yeah, we'll do it at the peak. All right. Over here was peak number one. Over here was peak number two. And we can see that we went a little bit higher each time during the MACD or when the MACD kind of peaked over here. And we had the same thing where we had a MACD peak in this top right here. Now, we ended up going above both those prior highs on this first move right here. And so I'm going to be watching the MACD to see if it comes back around and comes up because there's a very good chance that if we are going to go higher, that in the short term, the strength of the rally could be limited and a larger correction could be around the corner. Now, we've had a nice about 512 day uptrend. So a little over a year and a half almost two years of Bitcoin pretty much going up. And I've been DC, I only DCA Bitcoin, I don't DCA altcoins, but most altcoins ended up putting a bottom around there, which I think is interesting. So if Bitcoin is going to end up breaking the 60,000 level, and let's say worst case scenario, it comes back down to this region before going up and going north of 100k and i think the whole asset class as a whole is going to be at 10 trillion in 2026 end of 2025 what do you think is going to happen if bitcoin comes back down here to altcoins seeing as most of them bottomed over here now we had some like matic and link that bottomed over here and and a few of the winners like caspa which just launched and injective as well that ended up putting a bottom in over here but for the majority of them, they ended up bottoming over here. And so if Bitcoin is going to come back down to this area, what do you think is going to happen to altcoins when that liquidity leaves the space? Now, if we go back to Twitter, this I think is interesting. Because if we go to his replies, we just saw another big tether print 12 hours ago. A billion tethers were, were just minted at tether treasury psa usdt inventory replenish on the tron network note this is an authorized but not issued transaction meaning that this amount will be used as inventory for next period issuance request and chain swaps i'm not going to get into the argument of whether or not tether's backed or not it's a hot debate but we if we overlay let's remove a lot of these drawings here if we overlay the usdt market cap It's starting to come down off its highs. But what I want to point out is even after previous peaks, the tether market cap continued to grow. And so we saw this over here and over here. The tether market cap continued to grow when Bitcoin was going down. And so generally, it could, it could probably continue to grow even if we end up correcting. And so that's something to keep an eye on as well. Because when you see a kind of a downtrend, immediate downtrend, you can also start to see some reaction in the price. But we will, I think, continue to see the market cap of Tether grow. And that's just going to be something I will be watching. Uh, so I, I find it interesting. How long are they going to continue to print Tether? I mean, supposedly, these are institutional investors that are buying bitcoin with this tether and so it's always it's always a hot topic if you're new to crypto tether is always a hot topic it's the most liquid stable coin and the most used however it's things like this where people question whether or not they're actually backed and that tether has never actually done a full audit from like a independent firm they do attestations and attestation reports. So 
just something to keep an eye on. I'm not saying they are or they aren't backed. I'm just simply stating facts. I've been telling everyone to make sure to take profits if you've made life-changing money on your coins, not financial advice. But I think when we start to see non-crypto influencers become involved in a shady way in the crypto space, in my mind, that's a cautionary tale. So with that being said, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.